Morning, everybody. Um, before I dive headfirst into what AirC does and how we're, we're uh, disrupted technology in the nature-based um, solution market, I thought I'd give you a bit of a, a story around the genesis of Airseed and how it all started and how an English engineer stood in front of you in Melbourne on stage talking about nature-based uh, solutions. So my journey started about six years ago and I was having a coffee with a friend in Sydney and she told me one statistic. And that statistic was <clears throat> since 1990 to, to 2016, we'd lost over 1.3 million square kilometers of biodiversity across the world. And it's an impactful statement and it's an impactful statistic, but for me, I'm a visual person and I needed to understand how big that was. So I did what every, every astute researcher does and I went straight to Google and I typed in how big is 1.3 million square kilometers. And um, this is what I found. So it's the same size, approximately the same size as the landmass of South Africa which is a really impactful um, statement. I really started my journey into researching what are, the, what are the ways, what are the technologies we use today to mitigate that and start restoring lost biodiversity at scale. And I did this in two ways, my own research, but also getting out into the field and digging holes and planting trees with volunteering and land care and bush regen projects. And the two things I found, the two main methodologies we use today for large-scale restoration or what we call broadcast seeding and tube stock planting. And broadcast seeding is essentially taking seeds, scattering them on the ground. And you can do that by hand, you can do it by tractor, you can do it by aircraft. <clears throat> but some of the co core limitations and um, failures with that process is you use an awful lot of seed, a copious amount of seeds in an environment where seed stock is a scarcity. You have no control over where you're planting. And once those seeds are on the ground, they are susceptible to those uh, in those elements that are combative, so wind, rain, and invasive wildlife, so insects, birds, and rodents, and the like. And you end up with a, a, a low-digit survivability at a high cost um, as well. So looking at the other side of the scale, you've got tube stock planting, which most people would know what that is. It's growing seeds in a nursery, six months, two years to grow those seeds to be seedlings, and then use human capital to walk into a field, dig a hole, and plant a tree. Has yields good survivorship, but it simply isn't scalable when you're facing a problem as large as this, uh, and it's very expensive. So these, are, these were the core questions that we asked ourselves right at the beginning of Verseed, is how do we use technology to scale a solution? How do we use science to improve or bridge that gap between broadcast seeding and tube stop survivorship? And then also, one of the key other things that we learned in our research was there's very much a set and forget policy when it comes to restoration. We throw the seeds on the ground, we plant the trees, we walk away, we come back a year later. Has the project work, worked? And that's simply not a, a, a methodology that we need to use today. So how do we use technology to add more transparency and more verification to what's been planted? So breaking down Airseed into two core parts, the technology and the biotech. The technology, first thing people see is the drones, the big shiny thing in the room. But essentially, what the drones are is off-the-shelf part, parts plugged together to create a vehicle, a workhorse that facilitates the scale. The real smart of the solution lie in um, what we call the delivery systems, the payload, um, but then the software and the, and the machine learning. Now, the machine learning on the, um, on the ecosystem modeling or the pre-planting part of the, 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 the process is all to do with identifying where we match specific species that we're planting with specific microsites within a project. That feeds into the software, and the software then tells the drone where to fly and what to plant and what, what not to plant in. So we're, we're identifying obstacles such as roads, rivers, rocks, fallen trees, existing vegetation, and so on. <clears throat> the, the package put together, each drone, and you can see here the scalability, um, can plant up to 40,000 seed pods per day per drone. And we get to scale what we call swarming, flying five drones at the same time with the same team members. It's what we call one to many. So really increasing that throughput to 200,000 pods per day per team. And when you compare that to manual planting, you know, the global average today is around 800 seedlings per day per person. There's, there's a significant increase in, the, in, in scalability. Moving on to the biotech. So the biotech is what we call our, our, our seed pods. It's a means of encapsulating seeds inside of a, 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 inside of a specific uh, composition of pod, which is matched to the species in the soil that we're planting in. 
The, the pods themselves uh, help maintain precision of planting when planted from the drone. And once they're on the ground, they protect and repel those combative elements, those invasive um, animals, insects, birds, and rodents. But once the seed germinates, inside of the pod, you have a number of amendments. You have uh, nutrient and min minerals, but also microbial amendments. And that helps promote early stage growth, boosting uh, above ground biomass growth by up to and over 1,000% for many Australian flora. We manufacture these seed pods from a, what we call a mobile manufacturing plant, which sits in a shipping container, can cross borders really quickly without any restrictions from biosecurity, and make pods close to or in situ where you're, where you're replanting and restoring, um, which makes putting those two things together, the, the technology and the biotech, a very, very powerful solution. The last part of the solution, though, is, is the monitoring. And this is uh, equally important. Uh, we're, we're definitely changing the, the rationale of we plant and we walk away. We're involved in, in ongoing uh, monitoring post-planting, and we're looking for what's been, you know, plants that are being successfully grown. Uh, we're identifying biomass, but we're also identifying threats. And we're using machine learning and, and lots of multi-sensory um, multi data solutions to, to build these models to identify successful biomass growth rates, but also invent, identify areas that aren't working and why aren't they work, working. Is it invasive weeds? Was it herbivore attack? What caused the herbivore attack? Was it broken fences and the like? These are the key things that go into building a robust uh, restoration project. So bringing you back to the visual slide at the beginning, um, new statistics are out uh, this year, and it shows that the size of the problem has actually increased. The total addressable market for what we're, what we're building at Earthseed has increased to nearly 1.8 million square kilometers, and that's half the size of India. Um, what, we, what we need to do to, to address this problem, this scalable of, the scalability of problem, is harness innovation, harness technology and harness science to be able to tackle this level of biodiversity loss at speed. Earthseed as a, as a, as a business, um, we currently have 15 um, projects live across New South Wales, Victoria and Lower Queensland. Uh, we are operating in four market verticals, and we do have contracted uh, projects of up to 35,000 hectares uh, launching over the course of the next five years. Um, we have just recently launched our Series A round, uh, so I would invite anybody in the room that is excited by this technology and this, this science to, to come and have a conversation after, after this, uh, this talk. Um, and uh, yeah, appreciate you listening to me and taking the time to, to talk. Thanks.